Now, I think it would make sense to go back to the whiteboard again and draw a blueprint of a typical, of a standard or a typical ESS system. So we have uh, the main five pillars in your setup. You would have your solar power, your battery power, you would have a generator, and you have the grid. So the bottom four are your power sources. They would normally provide you with power. And then the top one are your loads, so your house and all the consumers that are inside of your house. Now, realize that two of the four power producers can also be power consumers, right? Your batteries uh, can also be a power consumer when they are charged, and the grid can also be a power consumer if you have an excess amount of solar power and you choose to feed it back into the grid. So you'd wire all these five components, you would all wire them together, uh, through a, normally through an AC circuit. So this is an AC coupled system, whereby even your solar power, which is DC, is converted into AC, and then while it is AC, alternating current, it is transported towards your inverter charger, and then converted back into DC, and then it's charging your batteries. So this is an AC coupled solar energy system, grid tight, with battery backup and a generator. If you would go for a direct connection between your solar panels and your battery bank with a DC to DC solar charge controller, this would be a DC coupled solar energy system because you couple your solar power directly only through DC to your battery bank. Now you can do either or, it really depends on your system and on your preferences which one you prefer. Uh, typically the larger systems would go for AC coupled, uh, the smaller ones for DC coupled, or the systems which primarily function as an off-grid solar energy system, they would typically also go for the DC coupled. But you can go with either or, either way the AC coupled or the DC coupled. All right, let him shut up for a second. I just want to explain to you that the content of this video is copied from the complete course of energy systems. If this information is enough for you, great. If you want to learn more and if you want to get access to the complete course, then check the information in the description below. All right, you go ahead again. Now, between the five pillars of your system, you would of course have certain control equipment, certain pieces of hardware that you need in order to make the whole system work. So let's run through them. The first one is your PV grid inverter. So as explained, the PV grid inverter takes the DC power from your solar panels. It optimizes the amount of power that comes from the solar panels and converts it from DC into AC. Then through your AC local grid, you transport the power towards, for example, your inverter charger, where then the power would be turned into DC or the AC would just continue towards your loads or towards the grid. So that's your PV grid inverter. Then the second component is your inverter charger. You know by now as well what an inverter charger is and what it does. So either way it's inverting. So it's taking the DC power from your batteries and turning it into AC power. Or it's charging batteries and it's taking AC power from your local AC grid, turning it into DC and charging your batteries. So that's your inverter charger. Then the next component is, an, uh, is the switch on your generator, which could be an automatic transfer switch. So this is an on-off switch, which will allow or not allow the power to flow from your generator into your local AC grid. It can be a very simple switch, very intelligent switch, or a remotely controlled switch. Then we have a similar functionality in the maintenance disconnect. So again, this is a heavy duty switch in between your grid and your local AC grid, so that you are in control whether or not you are connected to the grid. It can be activated or deactivated based on many different scenarios and arguments, but through this switch you have control whether or not you're connected to the grid. Then we have your distribution board. So your distribution board takes the, the main AC power from your local AC grid and then safely distributes it through your house. So it normally takes one AC in and then splits it up into many different AC groups. You can have your group for your lights, your group for your stovetop, your group for your, for your heating system, etc. So that's what your distribution board does. Now, you also have the option, instead of one conventional distribution board, to split your distribution board into two sections, whereby you separate your critical 
versus your non-critical loads. So, for example, you could say, well, my critical loads are my lights, my Wi-Fi router, my internet modem, uh, I want to have my electric blanket on all the time, whatever happens. So you could say, okay, which components are essential, which ones are critical, and they should always function, whatever happens. If I'm running on a generator, if I'm running on the batteries, if I'm running only, only on solar... I want to make sure that these loads, these consumers would always operate. Those appliances you would put in your critical group. And then you would have the second group in your main distribution board, which would be a non-critical loads, such as your maybe your dishwasher, your laundry machine, your, your heavy duty tools, your grinders, your welding machine, etc. So you would place the components that you don't require during running on your batteries or during a uh, during running on your generator, you would place them in the second group in your non-critical loads. And then your critical loads are the backed up loads or your vital loads, etc. But the ma main principle is you take your AC power from your local AC grid, split it into two separate groups, and then from these groups you now start to distribute it in the conventional way through your safety breakers, etc., to your, all your different loads. So now that you understand what the main components are of a of such a system, I want you I want to run you through a theoretical 24 hour period uh, and I want to show you what such a system could do for you. Now it entirely depends on how you would program, how you would configure the parameters of the system because these systems are quite advanced, they're quite intelligent and they can do whatever you tell them to do. But the purpose of this exercise is to show you what it could do for you and then you can decide later on, well, I want to tweak it a little bit different. So let's assume that you have this system up and running, it's installed and it's in the mid-afternoon, the sun is still relatively high up in the sky and you have plenty of power available. So then your solar panels are producing a substantial amount of power. It's feeding both your critical and your non-critical loads in your house and you still even have excess power available and you have decided that this excess power will go towards the grid. Your batteries are full so you have a surplus of electricity and you're feeding it back to the grid. But now during dinner time, you are cooking, you're doing all your things in your house, you are consuming quite a bit of electricity, and the grid goes down. There's a blackout, a power outage, a power cut, and there's no more electricity available from the grid. Now, you have configured your system and you've told, told your system, well, if it's during the daytime, I do not want my non-critical loads to turn off if there's a power outage. For this situation, I've assumed that you've also installed a, a medium-sized generator, which can actually work together with your inverter charger. So now in this situation, you're cooking, you're using quite a bit of electricity. Both your critical and non-critical loads are powered up, so everything is working just perfectly fine in your house. And your generator, together with your inverter, are providing all the power which is necessary. And normally in such a setup, your generator would work at its maximum capacity and the inverter would top up whatever is required, right? Because an inverter can switch really fast and the generator kind of likes to operate on a, on a steady load. This is the best for the, for the generator. So this is during dinner time. There's, there's a power outage, there's no power from the grid, you're running on your inverter and generator. But then somewhere later at night, the power comes back, right? So you are still consuming quite a bit of electricity and now you've configured your system that if the power comes back, the generator turns off. And since you have discharged slightly or medium the, the batteries, you can now start to charge your batteries from the grid while at the same time providing both your critical and non-critical loads, right? Because the grid is there, so there's not really a reason for, well, depends on your preferences, but typically people would allow both the critical and non-critical loads to be powered up. So this is um, late in the evening and you're going to bed, so uh, you're, you're dreaming about good things and you're not consuming that much electricity in your house. And now again the grid goes down, there's a power outage again. But now you've set up the system in such a way that it knows that, well, in the middle of the night when you're asleep and there's no heavy loads on, if the 
grid goes down, it is only necessary to provide power for your critical loads. So the grid goes down, there's no electricity from the grid, but your generator doesn't kick in. Only the crit critical loads are powered up by the inverter. You're happily asleep and nothing goes wrong in the house, right? You still have your, maybe your security system still up and running, your fridges, your freezers, they're all still powered up. So this would be during the night. And then in the morning, as you are waking up, the sun is coming up and there's plenty of power available. So now, since you have slightly discharged the batteries during the night, the solar panels are charging, are recharging the battery bank. There's even enough power available to charge both, to power both the critical and not non-critical loads in your house. And there's even more power available, so you've configured the system that the excess power will be fed towards the grid and even feeding power back into the grid. So by now you understand the main components.